When you partner with Axon, you immediately gain access to a full range of products and solutions designed to meet the complex needs of today's grower. We carry all major brands and sizes of tires and wheels. We specialize in large diameter wheels for large equipment. We have one of the largest OEM replacement wheel inventories in North America. Known for extreme flotation setups, duals, and triples, we have wheels for all makes and models of tractors, sprayers, combines, and grain carts. If we don't have the wheel in stock, we'll custom build, sandblast, and paint in-house. There isn't a more vast inventory in North America dedicated to helping dealers move more iron. With facilities on the West Coast and in the heart of the Midwest, leverage our 230,000 square feet of indoor inventory to solve any problem a grower may have. Move more iron with Axon. Hello and welcome to Moving Iron Podcast number 356. This week I've got Aaron Finnell back here with me and we've got uh, got a few things to talk about. It's been a little while. How you been? I'm terrific. Finer and frog hair? It is. It is. It's a spring. We have seen several days. Yeah. Oh, a handful. In the 70s. Yeah, it's been... Uh, Cold days are now 40. What, what's, the, what's the thing here? We got... Oh, you call it, you call it second second winter. winter. Yeah, second winter. So you've got that, and then you've got what my favorite thing is, 82, 85, 56, 32, 75, 56, 82. And one of those days, sprinkle in a 25 for the low. Just so you're nice, and if if your hose is out, it's frozen. Yeah. There you go. Just to remind you, it's not summer yet. Don't get used to it. Yeah. (laughs) Just when you thought, just when you thought winter was over, bam, here it comes. Here it is. We've had, uh, we've had a- these. Actually, just, well, it'll be an hour and a half south of here. There was a blizzard yesterday, yeah. so there's that. We had the thunder snow. Yeah. Not to be confused with thunder cats, but right. thunder snow. Oh! You know, that's, that was one of the, the things that to keep in the, keep in the back of your mind there. We don't have that sword with the eyes yeah. either. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Use combines to go away. <laughs> Use combines. All right. So. <laughs> How did that come up? So I think that's a, uh, that's probably, so what I, what I want to talk about today is kind of like, you know, the signs that, you know, you're in a softening market, right? And I think we're in that, well, like obviously we're, a, we're in a softening market. I mean, it's like, I'm some breaking news here, like, you know, <laughs> but but I think the the real the real tale to me that kind of locked it in for me was when I started noticing the amount of for the longest time, and we'll use combines for the example because of the number of machines that are out there. You had a lot of one year old combines being sold that were you know four hundred thousand dollar plus. Yet, mm-hmm. yet they're moving right, mm-hmm. and not that they're not moving now, but they're not moving nearly as fast as they were. And now you've got the other end of the spectrum that two, I would say $300,000 and less machine, right? And if you really segment that down, really it's 250 and less is really kind of where yeah. the hot spot is. So yeah. if you're looking at those machines, you saw the same thing happen um, in other softening markets where the high price stuff, not to the stop selling, because that's not what I'm saying, it's still selling, but just not at the pace that it was but you're seeing more people get interested in the, the $150,000 row crop tractor. It's right. got mm-hmm. five to 7,000 hours on it. The thousand, you know, 1,500, 1,750 sub hour combine. You're seeing some of that stuff come into play where there's more interest in those kind of things. The problem with that is re- real quick. I would even, may I interject? Oh, sure. May I walk all over what you're saying? Yes. Okay. You're right on your combine thing on like that 250 down. Right. And you could also put a really hard concrete floor at 400 up. Okay. Okay. Six months ago, three months ago, that concrete was five up. Yep. It's dropped down a whole floor on the building. Right. Okay. So now you got that 
wonderland of the 250 to four to 399 999 right. combine yeah and that thing that is the most fickle market out of all three mm -hmm. because that is your oh my god i wish we had 30 of these yeah. to how come we can't get rid of these in the middle right in the next day the next day it's like or it's backwards like yeah. why can't we get rid of these and then you sell 10. right so there's there's that in the the steps or levels of the combine market first of all <clears throat> just to basically point out what you said and then on the other aspect of that where you have the uh it, it and yes they're still moving but nobody's standing in line like right. they were that's that's been a big change right and the machines that that tractor isn't back to several podcasts ago as we were lavishing in the look at all the cash and look at all the machinery we can sell the product segments have all moved so that guy that wants that hundred fifty thousand dollar tractor wants that 2020 hundred fifty thousand or the 2019 hundred fifty thousand dollar tractor right. he can't find it because everybody went and participated in the stupidity so now as the dust settles and things become back to normal which they should in a softening market yep. slowly but surely it'll be back but yep. right now because because of the and i'll just call it that stupidity market the segments that guys are after are either hen's teeth or the machine he wants is oops those are actually over there and that his 250 combine is actually a three and a quarter combine now yeah. Yeah. i think that's the uh so that's i think that's what we're seeing here the softening of the market that i'm looking at isn't necessarily oh my god here comes a collapse no it's it's oh my god here comes the uh you know the party's kind of over now so right you kind of have to clean up the mess and that's oh damn at. they turn the lights on they turn the lights on <laughs> you know those you know, cues i thought you were <laughs> so, Last I mean, song. <laughs> so i think i think there's some of that that's going on i think that's what's driving the marketplace so when i'm looking at what's going on there and I'm seeing more machines that are absolutely moving because of more because of the price than because, Hey, that's what I want. Right. That to me is just showing a sign of, well, this is what I, this is what I can do. Yeah. And I'm going to do this right here. And exactly. Is, I'm not going to try to gamble or anything like that. So, right. Right. A hundred percent. All right. So we're, we're back into budget buying, not yeah. what buying. Yeah. And we'll see what happens if if the uh, if the overall marketplace continues to move down the same path that uh, I'm sorry, not the marketplace crop production thing moves down the same path that Sean Hack is talking about, and we have a 2012 style drought in the Midwest, in Iowa, Illinois, and Indiana, and it and we produce you know 128 bushel average corn again, 135 bushel average corn again, whatever it was when that happened. We'll have some record prices, you know. We'll have because our stocks are so low right now that we'll have some see some big prices. So I could have a big, I could change the way things are, but that I that, that would, would be just, almost really bad. What because 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 we we were you know under trajectory, and then we had the last mm -hmm. <laughs> straight up last year eighteen months. Now we're getting a little bit of sanity back in it. Mm -hmm. If that happens, that's going to be one of those deals where in their charts, they make that little line. Right. And it's going to shoot back up into stupidity X4. Right. And for us, that would be, uh, for the, for the equipment side of the business, to me, that all that would do would just, would just be extrapolate the problem that we can see right now. Well, we're, we'd have a hell of an equipment problem in 2030 when everything ordered in 25 yeah, yeah, shows, yeah, up. shows up. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's what, that's what that problem would be at. That's what we'd be looking and for. and that's the beauty of it that's why i don't think we'll have a collapse like we've had collapses no. before we no. just don't have the numbers it's the, the numbers aren't there the only that. problem is when we do get soft we lose another layer of that 60 plus group that's i've had enough fun and mm -hmm. i'm done yeah. those are the planes pointed down i'm punching out well yeah. we lost an ass for a seat uh, that's and that brings up a whole other conversation about um, 
when you have as the numbers dwindle, so do the so does the supply. Which do you ever really get out of that problem? No. You see what I'm saying? Like if if you know I'm just throwing out numbers here just to say hypothetically you have a hundred thousand machines and you have ten thousand people to buy them. Mm-hmm. Right? If you have eighty thousand machines and eight thousand people to buy them, is that ratio still the same? Do you still have a user equivalent problem? Right. You see what I'm saying? It, and I, and I think you always will. Yeah. That's just the nature of the beast. That's always right. going to be there, and that's something that the car business doesn't worry about. Well, yeah, they got three hundred fifty million people to buy a car. Right. Right. Everybody born today right. wants to drive sixteen yeah. years from now. Right. Yeah. There's lots of farm kids born today that. Or leaving yeah right you know yeah all right what's that brings up another good point so i got a blog post that's coming out and it's about i wrote basically it's about the planner marketplace and my view on the planner market is we are headed for a even though there's only 3700 planners on the market that we're headed for a um an issue with in the planner problem a planner um oversupply problem and the reason I say that is, is because it's not so much the um, the machines that are out there on the marketplace that are the problems. Now, when it comes to planners, everything, every planner is a direct competition for a planner for sale. The planner you have in your barn, the planner I have in my barn, the planner everybody else has in their oh, barn. Because now, if because I don't like of, your number, yeah, upgrade, upgrade upgrade kids. Kids. if I don't like your number, or I don't like the machine sitting down here, I'll just go upgrade mine and make it what I want it to be. Right. That makes sense. So now every planner everywhere new used in the shed or wherever it's at is now in direct competition with every other planner. Oh, my, my, I have one of the 2012s that wasn't auctioned off, right. dropped in the ocean somewhere and just right. vanished. Right. And it's in direct competition with the new 25. Now I wrote that article thinking that this is really kind of a far fetched thing and Maybe right. some clickbait here, you know. Right. Mean? But the more I think about it, I mean, the more logically that makes sense. Yeah, in a way, yeah. in a way, I, as you know, and I've said on here, I, it's hard for me to wrap my head around just point blank as a used guy because it's, I know it gets a new plate and all that, but it's still a used planner to me. Like it just, it's, it's just hard for me to wrap my yeah. head around. And 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 that's honestly. That is the buyer. That's what we have to, as dealers, get the buyers over because right. that is very much where they're coming from. Because I don't, I have an old school brain, so uh, it'll be. I, that, I want shiny stickers, man. <laughs> we well, get shiny stickers. Well, you get all these stickers and everything. Okay, I want my hitch to have never been hitched before. <laughs> How's that? You don't How's that? The, you don't want the egg shaped hitch? No, you, no pinhole. <laughs> you don't want the egg shaped pinhole. <laughs> No, but well, yeah, you're see, you're talking DB. I was talking like 1775 oh, okay. with the two point. I got you. I want that one just unadulterated. Nobody's ever clicked it before. There we go. There you go. And that's worth, that is worth $150,000. <laughs> and that's basically what it comes down to. Yeah. I mean, you can take what you have and turn it brand new and have the latest and greatest. There's not one thing you can't put on, right? Right. If you're within the certain realm, so that's that's where we're at. Yep. So is your and availability is better because it's not you're 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 getting components when you can get components, not oh they got to put it all together and all that, which is a tremendous delay. Yeah. Then it falls on us to get it all put together. Yeah. And I, so I was thinking about that from the perspective of how does that play into the strategy of a of some equipment, what's that look like, mm-hmm. right? So a sales guy, when I'm looking at this, I'm like, hey, no matter what, I'm selling a planner. If you don't want a new one or you don't want to use one, I've got a third option for you. Yeah. And there's never been that option available, right? Right. So as a as a, as a used guy, I'm, because to me, selling, I'm, I'm kind of in the same camp as you. Me selling a, an upgrade kit isn't necessarily, um, what's the best way to put it? It's not like I'm selling you a new planner. I'm just, I'm selling you like, I hate to even put it like this simple, simplifying it like this, but I'm just selling you, you know, new disc blades for your disc. Well, yeah, it's exactly what it is. That's a beautiful analogy because that's essentially what it is. 
I'm, but yeah, and it shows up in the shipping crate, right? Several shipping crates. Right. See that load on that truck of them cardboard boxes? That's all yours, right? Yay! Yep. You know, where's the shiny green paint inside the box? Yeah, lots of little pieces of it. Like, yep. yep. It's just it's it's a whole different realm, which could be the forefront of your componentization, your yeah. swap, your future swaps. And I, as I look at what's going on there, I think to me it's it's one of those deals where the options that are available now to to the to the buyer are kind of limitless. Except in four wheel drive market, because Big Bud's going to take it all over. So <laughs> yeah, they're going to have somehow down. they're going to have eight hundred percent market share. They're going to run triple twelve hundred LSWs. <laughs> you can't move it. You can't actually take it anywhere. Right, you right. Can't, you can't drive it anywhere. <laughs> but yeah, it looks cool. But you've got a, you know, as you as you're looking at the same thing, same thing with with sprayers now. Yeah. For the most part, for the most part. You can do the same kind of thing with a sprayer. Kind of. Yeah. Not, not to the extent you can do it with a planter, but in a lot of systems on a sprayer, you can, you can do that with. Here's what I never thought of till you just said that. Where the disconnect is going to be for the buyer is that cab. That's true. For, for a fleet, for the large, you know, your, your five digit acres fleet guy that he's, he's on the laptop, not in the tractor, mm -hmm. not an issue, right? Owner operator. That's where you're going to have a disconnect. Yeah. You know, say you take a, for instance, a 40, 38. Okay. And you could rail that system. Obviously your stainless tank ain't going anywhere. Right. It's fine. New engine wheel motors. Boom. You know, I mean, just keep going at all your tech on there and you're still sitting in that 3000 hour cab. So it's do true. you go like the yellow people, their refurbishment program, it's a whole damn machine. So sure. is that where you go? Do you take it the next step? If you're going that route, is that an offshoot of the business perhaps? Yep. Yeah. You know, that's a, it'd be interesting to watch how that, that one works because I think how important our caps going to be. Well, in, then in there's the other, I know, you know I mean? then there's the other argument and you're about out of time for that lunch and autonomy. So <laughs> Keep that in mind. It's maybe not as fast as we thought. But there's a point in time where, great, my cab's 10 years old or 15 years old or whatever it is, but I'm rarely in it. Right, right. I have to back it out of the shed. Right. Right. Yeah, I think that's the... Uh, but when I get in there and back it out of the shed, I want that leather seat, you know. And well, it's still got a leather seat. It's got the little well, massage. I need this. <laughs> yeah, the signature signature package. You gotta, you gotta. Every once in a while, you gotta put a little leather treatment on it. There you and, go. And you're good to go. You're good to go. Naga hide. Yeah. Yep. But you know, and and you're right. Maybe maybe that world crisscrosses right there, and that's where autonomy. You know, we're we're updating these previous machines yep. and we've hit a point where well the next step is the cab except oh look autonomy really did take off three years ago so we fix that issue so then that leads back into to my next point i want to talk about that kind of leads into this whole deal so we talked about kind of where the market's soft at and why we see it being soft and we talked about how these other things are playing into what we see at music equipment marketplace so now as use equipment guys how's how does it work when we sit back and we take a look at all of the different components now that we're messing with? How, how do you how are we how are we going to functionally value used equipment? That is my biggest problem with it. Because I, 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 I keep thinking about oh it's just going to be it's real simple it's it's whatever it's upgradable to but that's not even true. I think that's even an accurate way to look. Now at it. you got it as far as what you're valuing you got to look at what it is right damn now. Right, I think that's the only way you can do it. Whether it's upgradable, whatever. If it's not upgradable, it's a knock. Mm -hmm. It's got to be that mindset. Kind of like chopper spreader on a combine. You don't get more for a chopper. You get hammered for a spreader. Right. Okay. So, that being the case, I think <coughs> you, you evaluate it as what it currently is, not what it can do. And then 
the thing is, do you upgrade it as X percent more than what it was or what it, you know, it, right. it's a 14. Do you do a certain percentage more than a 14? Do you do a certain percentage back of a 24 because the pieces are 24, but the bars are 14, right? Could you remember the conversation you and I had when the first, um, upgrade kits came out mm -hmm. and we were talking about how do we value a trade-in when it comes in that's got an upgrade kit on it and it's been uh then i stood on a soapbox and said it doesn't matter it's an old planner <laughs> yeah. a lot of my soapboxes are apparently made out of like cereal box material <laughs> they can't hold a grown-ass man they're made out of salt in a, in a rainstorm mm. that's that's what i would say but there there you go when you're looking at because we sit there, okay, so you got a you got a 20, I don't know, 2018, 2019 high speed planner, and you got the guy that's got the 2012, 2013 planner, and they upgrade it. So, what do you have now? You don't have a 2019, 2018, something like that. You don't have that, right? But you don't have a 2012. You've got a you have like a 15 or a 16 model planner. Do you split the difference? Yeah, I mean, the what do you have? Like, how do you, how do you go about deciding what that's worth? Well, and the like sad it. thing is you might have 10 guys figure it 10 different ways and five of them are going to be pretty close. Right. You know, but yep. it's, and, and I mean, you can't sit here and say, well, there's only one way to do it because everybody does it different ways. Right. It's just matters if the numbers are right. That's the great, the, the crazy thing about all this is, is that, yeah, we can sit there and say, Hey, this is how it's supposed to be done. There's no, there's not. So I had. You know Thad Shively, right? Oh, yeah. So he was on a podcast with me the other day, and we were talking about something. And we were talking about, you know, how the evolution of, you know, evaluating equipment from 38 years ago when he first started to what it is now. And, you know, I was talking to him about, you know, the guy that taught me how to do this stuff. And and uh, he was talking about the Polaroid pictures, you know, that mm -hmm. he'd get the vanilla envelope with, like, 20 Polaroid pictures in there. And he'd look at these pictures. And I don't know if you remember a Polaroid picture, but their, their oh, photo yeah. quality was not, Top was, not, notch. was not very good, you know. Real good pictures. Everything always selling. seemed to have a yellow tinge to it. Right. We, uh, so anyway, going through that thing, and, and uh, the point I said to him is like the cool thing about what we're doing now moving forward is the 38 years of experience that you have that some of that stuff will carry over, but there's a whole portion of this business that no one's going to have a playbook for. Right. And that's I think that's kind of what, just like what we just talked about here with that. You don't have a brand new planner. You don't have a 10 year old planner. What do you got? Right. And how do you functionally look at that? Well, so, and it, it's like this five years ago, wholesale in a combine. What are the metal specs on it? First question now selling a combine. What activations does it have? Does it have advisor? Does it have active yield? Does it have premium activation? Does it have this? Does it have, it's got 28 foot auger. Look, you can see it. Right. It's got rear wheel assist. Look, you can see it. Mm -hmm. But that's not the first question. Right. That's why the sunset, riding off into the sunset, looks more attractive all the time because it's just a tech world, man. Maybe you can get a little side, little side like a job building. Selling 8820 somewhere. Selling 8820s, 4450s. You know what I mean? I don't even need it that old. I'll take just, I'll even take R's and S's, but can we stop at like 14? Because that's, that's the other thing, too, to think about is. From that perspective, like the autonomous when it comes out, and you have the autonomous kit that you can put on. Everyone's got their autonomous kit that they'll put on there. Yep. So now I've got a, a 2027, 20, right? That came that way from the factory. I can put the kit on a. And that's a whole other topic, too, is like, let's just say that, I don't know, say 2015, you go back to 2015, and that's as far back as you can go mm -hmm. to put the autonomous kit on something. What's a 2014 worth? Okay, now in that argument, I think that is a buyer preference thing, and I don't think it is that that fifteen that's autonomous ready, if you will, autonomy ready, is worth a little bit more than a standard fifteen, but I don't see it as that big of a thing because and for the first five years. Five, five years, maybe even 10. Okay, so explain that. What do you mean? Okay, 
I don't for the for the first five to ten years, I don't think the autonomy ready is a big plus. Yeah. Because we're not gonna have the the, the buyer world that it's going into either tractor, the 14 or 15 isn't ready for that. I think the year, if it, if we're in 27, I think the 24, the 23 being autonomy ready could be a big thing, but I think we're a ways out before that 10 year old tractor has to be autonomy ready for there to be some kind of premium for that tractor. Do you follow me? I do. And I, I think why I think there's an instant premium with that is that when things become fully autonomous and I don't have to worry about labor, everyone now has, has the same capabilities. It's their access to capital that is going to slow them down. I understand that. But you have to keep in mind in agriculture, you're always going to have just because that guy has autonomy right now doesn't mean he's going to farm the entire county. Because, no, no. What, yeah, because. John Farmer and his son Joe, who's 25, are still farming, and they're not going anywhere. Right. And he's not autonomy ready. Or his brother-in-law in Iowa that farms 3,000 acres, he's not ready for it yet. Right. Yeah, I see what you're saying. But I think... The, my, Ten years from now, yeah. those guys aren't here. Possibly. I truly believe that. As, as, a, as a not even a gnat on a dog's ass in the world of production ag... It's going to be A's all, all the way to S's. I just think it changes. It changes what the, the customer demographic looks like. Yeah, and that's basically what I'm getting at in a, in a roundabout way. Your, your owner-operator is the segment that's leaving rapidly every day. Well, I think your owner-operator now is just operating from an office in his house and not that's not owner in operator. the cab. That's not owner-operator. I mean... I am the one who goes to the bank. I am the one who sits in the seat and plants. That guy. That guy still goes to the bank and still sits in the seat of his office chair and watches the screen. If he's in autonomy is what I'm getting at. But, I'm, but saying, I'm saying. But I, the point I'm making about autonomy. I'm talking about him now or five years from now. You're talking about him 20 years from now. What the point I'm On making, that operation. What I'm The point I'm making to you about autonomy is that now I have machines to just go out and do the work. I don't have to worry about my labor anymore. I understand. And that's, there and there could a, be and there could be some, if you will, a nice. B minus customer that becomes an A plus because he wrapped his sure. head around it and set an attack mode and holy shit, here sure. we go. Sure. So. Yeah. so I think there's a I just I, I thought about that last night when I was I was looking some stuff up and I was sitting there looking at it. I was like, what's this gonna be like in five years when we're guessing? This is a 10 year old planner with six month old stuff on it. How do we, how do we tell what's it worth? Yeah. It's not new and it's not I know. 15 of it. What is it? You know? when, when the up, you're right. Yeah. When the upgrade stuff is a year or two older, I think it's a hell of a lot easier yeah. than if it's five years old. Right. Then what? Yeah. Cause then you start looking at it from, you know, yeah. And maybe it. once it is five years old, maybe the old bar loses some of its negative mystique. You know what I mean? Like I could see that in the marketplace. When your when your pup stuff yeah. is five years old, but it was on a fourteen bar, nobody cares about the fourteen bar as much anymore as how's the pup stuff. Right. It's just a mind shift, and it just because of the buyer market that buys that planner, that five-year-old used planner, but they want all the tech. I think it becomes what's the pup stuff like it doesn't, the year of the bar is gone. Right. Which is funny. Cause that circles back to my biggest problem with it is that buyer segment. I just, I just annihilate, annihilated my own comment before. Cause I said that buyer segment is going to be the ones that like me, I can't wrap my head around why is that stuff new and the bar is old and I don't know what to do with my hands, you know, <laughs> that kind of deal. Right. That the whole bar thing. That'll so be, let me just keep talking and I can just totally fix all you my come problems. Full, you yeah. Come full circle. Yeah. Come full circle. The bar is going to be a, that's going to be a funny, a funny issue to watch because there's going to be some point in time where all right, cool. We're going to, you want to trade in your, your old, you know, you're going to go from a, a 14 that you've had since 2014 now it's you know 20 years old or whatever right 
and now you're, you're going to switch up to where something that's 10 years old and do the whole thing all over again, right? Right. So now I'm trading it in. Okay, cool. I got the x-ray machine coming in. We're going to x-ray this real quick and make sure that the the integrity of the steel is still good. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. At what, exactly. Where do you start crossing that bridge? You know what I mean? And those, those are all things that you start looking at. So it's like a whole thing now we start looking at. So Outstanding. Probably a good place to stop. You, you put all the all your pup stuff on your 1720 and then you pull the wing off because of metal fatigue. Right, right, exactly. That's exactly right. And all of those yeah. harnesses went. Yeah, that's exactly right. Exactly right. Yeah. All right, good place to stop. Folks want to reach out to you, and what's the best place to do that? Well, uh, let's see here. All of the social media, except I'm not on the IG. You should get on the gram, but I should. I just, I don't get it. It's just like Facebook, only not, kind of. It's pictures. I know that's what I put on Facebook's pictures. Anyway, all on all the social medias, just by my name, Aaron Fintel. Um, pretty active on the Twitterverse. Throw a lot of deals out there by my name at a a Ron Fintel. Uh, call me, text me three zero eight seven six zero one one nine three, or email me Aaron dot at movingironllc dot com. And I am Casey Seymour. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Moving Iron LLC. Go to LinkedIn at Moving Iron Podcast and check out the YouTube version of this over on the ever so cleverly named Moving Iron Podcast YouTube channel. So check that out. Um, you can go to find everything Moving Iron related at movingironllc.com. And breaking news here, folks. So probably the next uh, 30 to 45 days, I have a brand new website for Moving Iron Podcast. Ooh, buddy. Look Woo! Out. There might even be might even be some moving iron merch on there you can get. Oh, you know, nice I mean, I swag. That, I don't know what that's gonna be. You know, you might get a jacuzzi or something. But check that out. We get all the good stuff there. And uh, so look for that. It'll be out here. More importantly, on the Moving Iron website, you get the information for the Moving Iron Summit coming up here in Nashville, Tennessee, September 11th through the 13th. You get all the information there. Great place to network, wouldn't you say? Absolute best one there is in the country for in used country. equipment. Yeah. So you want if you're a used equipment guy or just a sales oriented person in general, and you want to show up and talk to people that do the same stuff all day every day, and then have some vendors around that can help you uh, maximize what you're doing at your dealership, check out the Moving Iron Summit. Uh, like I said, all the information is up there on the website. And network in the evening. Network in the evening. You know, we, we do something in the evening. We do some networking. Maybe you get some blackmail information. Might <laughs> <laughs> be part of what you do in the black. Boy, that dealer transfer got cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> so you got got that going for it. So if you need more information than what's up there, send me an email at moving iron podcast at moving iron podcast.com and I will get back to you ASAP. So with that, I'm Casey Seymour with Aaron Fennel. Oh, one more thing. One more thing. If you're one of the first 150 people to sign up, Axon takes care of the first fifty dollars of that registration fee. So moving well, on. well worth your time. So with so now with that, I'm Casey Seymour with Aaron Fennel. Let's move some iron folks. Out. In the 21st century Hard